Hi, I'm Thought Slime. I recently graduated from computer school, and um, I want to talk to you about uh, computers and why capitalism is like the bullies that steal my lunch money, and how all of this relates to the larger Star Trek canon. Psych! I'm not a nerd. I'm a dangerous, tough boy radical who does toughy stuff like crying about cartoons. Today I'm going to talk about the web. I know, nerd bullshit, right? Wrong. The web is radical. Because it's communist as hell. When I say communist, I probably mean it in a different sense than you understand it. I mean, a stateless, classless, moneyless society predicated on the maxim from each according to their ability to each according to their need. I do not mean a society in which the state controls industry, even if... They do so based on the idea that they will eventually create a stateless, classless, moneyless society organized around the maxim from such a society may refer to itself as communist, but it has not yet achieved communism and, in my opinion, uh, wouldn't. That being said, the web, what is it? Some kind of internet? No. Long story short and barely accurate, the web essentially allows your browser to behave like a file explorer does on your computer. Files on, on the internet are given uh, a unique address that you can type from anywhere and retrieve those resources using what's called a universal resource locator or uh, URL or URL if you're nasty. The internet existed before the web, but it sucked. Files were organized into strict top-down hierarchies, and as we know, hierarchies make everything worse. The big breakthrough that the web brought to the table was that you could hyperlink resources together. So if I'm having a conversation with you about the film Ghoulies 3, Ghoulies Go to College, and I want to convince you to watch it, I can share a link to the trailer, and then you'll see that and have to watch it because it's so awesome. Now, the Ghoulies are about to learn what higher education is all about. Brewskies. That's something we take for granted nowadays, but it represents probably the biggest shift in human communication ever, like since we invented language. The web is a seismic shift in the way that information is shared, one that we're still trying to come to grips with today. And the only reason that it worked, the only reason that it became as ubiquitous as it is now, is that it's communist as all hell. Furthermore, Everything that sucks about the web, everything that makes it annoying or difficult and sometimes even dangerous to use, is the result of capital insinuating itself into what is naturally a communist institution. I got a question for you. How much did you pay for your web browser? How much did you fork over to Google or, or Mozilla or Microsoft for, for your web browser? How much did you pay to use the programming languages that the web is built in, like HTML or CSS or JavaScript and so on? I'll go even further. How many of the websites that you visit every day even cost you money? And I don't mean like from your internet service provider, obviously you have to pay to be on the internet. And obviously there are some websites that charge you money, probably websites you use every day like Netflix or Spotify, but the overwhelming majority of them give their services away for free. And that's a little strange, don't you think? Some of the most complex and useful software is just thrown out there and available for anyone to use for free? Don't you find that a little odd? But not really, right? Most of these allegedly free services are supported by advertising or by selling user metadata to people who will use that metadata for advertising. In fact, you may have gotten an ad for professional diaper eating champions Prager University before this very video. Even now, Dennis Prager is paying for me to be able to tell you that I think he gets an erection at the idea of children starving to death in the third world because of the dipshit neoliberal policies that he thinks you're imbecilic enough to believe in. Dennis Prager smells like farts, thanks for the cash, sucker. See, that's the thing about advertising, is it's kind of a crapshoot. I mean, you don't know if your ad is going to be effective, you don't know if your ad is going to be put with something that makes it look bad, and even if it all works out, most people use Adblock anyway, and they're not going to see it. Advertising is risky, and it's the prerogative of big business to avoid risk. 
to avoid risk to their profit margin, not to like their employees or customers or the environment or their complicity with war crimes. What I'm trying to say is that I don't think that many of these companies would prefer to stake their profitability on advertising. A much surer bet would be to just charge you for the thing that they made. And that's not unusual, is it? I mean, there's plenty of suckers out there that actually pay for software. Programs like Photoshop can just have yearly release schedules with incremental upgrades, like a really weird EA sports game. And people will just buy it again and again, even though they don't really understand the difference between the versions or why it's supposed to be better or where the where the frig the, the type tool went. Where did the type tool go? If they could just charge you for their stuff, they would. But they can't because no one's going to pay for it if they do. And if they tried, someone would come along and build the same thing, give it away for free and eat their lunch. You going to pay for an email address when Gmail is free? And if Google decides they want to start charging for Gmail, anybody in the world can just look up how to build an email service from the free resources on the web and just make it themselves. The only way you can get away with charging people for something on the internet is if only you can make it or only you have the right to legally sell it. That's why pages like Spotify or Netflix can get away with charging you because they have all the stuff you want. Like Netflix has afterlife. A good day is when I don't go around wanting to shoot random strangers in the face and then turn the gun on myself. Bad then. <laughs> you can't put afterlife on your website because Netflix owns it. And also, why would you want to? So you really can't make your own Netflix, not without a lot of money. But anyone could make Twitter. Almost the entirety of Twitter's tech stack, the software used to power it, is free and open source, meaning you could download it tomorrow and if you know what you're doing, you could build a Twitter or many Twitters. If Twitter tried to charge people for using its service, then someone would just come along and build a better Twitter. And it wouldn't be hard to do, because all you'd have to do is build a Twitter without Nazis on it. Someone please do that. Not, I'm not gonna join Mastodon, don't ask. So Twitter has to rely on advertising if they wanna make money. Making money is kind of a big deal for Twitter. It's kind of the only reason they do anything. And the people who make Twitter, all the employees, need that money so that they can buy food and uh, pay rent. Under capitalism, if you wanna give something away for free, you've gotta make money doing it. Obviously companies like Twitter or, or Real companies like Google or Uber or Amazon are not communist. These are the most capitalist institutions on God's green earth, and they control and operate large swaths of the web. I'm not deluded about that. And on the surface, that might seem to contradict my thesis. Here's the thing, though. All of those companies have discovered that if they want to build a product that people are actually going to use, they have to rely on communism to do it. Look at your two, the website that you're on right now. What brings you to YourTube? Is it the ads? Do you come here for the ads? Do you come here for the original content? Do you come here because of the expertly curated recommendations? You come here for the videos. The videos that goofuses like me make by ourselves. Why do you go to Twitter? Do you, is it because you like having your metadata sold to advertisers so that they can target you with more specific ads? Or do you like the tweets that millions of people post every day, providing countless hours of free entertainment for everyone? Which is the thing that you like? These businesses rely on the fact that you're willing to work for free, not because you're being compensated, but just because you want to make the world a better place or give something to the community. One might say that you're giving according to your abilities, so that others can have what they need. And it ain't just YouTube bozos like me, neither. Okay, look at Wikipedia, perhaps the most useful tool on the internet, based on the idea that a common resource like knowledge is more useful and more beneficial if everyone has access to it and control over it. And sure, that means that there's the potential for abuse. Anyone can come along and, and vandalize a Wikipedia page. But 
Here's the other thing. In a regular encyclopedia, if they print wrong information because, say, they were paid to or the guy who runs the encyclopedia like has an interest in doing it or there's a political bias, you can't change that. You can change it on Wikipedia. So, Wikipedia is not unique in its potential for abuse. It is, however, unique in that it's built by volunteers. Volunteers giving free labor for the benefit of the commons. In fact, just one man, Stephen Pruitt, has personally edited almost one-third of the 5.7 million Wikipedia articles. He didn't do it because he got paid to. He did it just to enrich humanity's understanding of the world, on the basis that everyone having access to a common resource makes that resource more valuable and useful. That, my friends, is a communism. He did a communism. Which is why it's so funny that both he and Wikipedia founder Jumbo Jimmy Wales are libertarian objectivists. Eat shit, Ayn Rand. Communists win again. And it ain't just the pages themselves, either. It, the tools used to build those pages are built and distributed the same way. Tools like PHP or Node.js or MySQL or MySQL if you're a plebeian do not at me are all open source, meaning that people volunteer their code, which you can view for free, to make software that's more dependable and robust. These tools and hundreds of other ones like them that you probably prefer and are going to complain that I didn't talk about are all just out there for free. And, and anyone can just have them and use them to make cool stuff. We're so often told that the only way to incentivize hard work is through profit and competition. Nobody's going to just work for free for the better of their community. People are only going to work if there's a reward for them personally, like uh, a, a nice t-shirt or a copy of Crash Bandicoot or $115 billion. And yet, thousands of highly skilled workers build cool shit and give it away for free every single day. And that's within capitalism, where if they don't make money doing something, they're gonna die. Imagine the work that they, and by they, I mean we, could be freed up to do if, if we didn't have to waste a third of our lives toiling away for some rich dipshit to go on an ayahuasca retreat on their golden yacht powered by cocaine. And this same dynamic plays out everywhere on the web. Do you like a video game that costs billions of dollars to develop? Well, hundreds of volunteers are just going to build thousands of hours of free content for that game just because it's fun. Do you have a very specific and technical question that you need answered? Well, just go to uh, one of the thousands of unique discussion forums where highly trained people provide their expertise to the community for free on the basis that everyone benefits from that cooperation. Maybe you just want to chill out and be entertained, maybe see a funny video about a very crazy pizza website, and boy howdy, wouldn't you know it, there's billions of hours of free entertainment crammed into every little bit of the web. Wait, 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 hold on, Thought Slime, you busted. You said yourself earlier in this video that you make money off of your videos. You can't claim you're doing any of this for altruism. And yeah, you, you got me. It's true. I do, partially at least, do this as a job. Because I gotta have a job to be alive. But do you know what would be a much more lucrative job? Anything. But particularly, uh, making fun of video game feminism, or pretending like Jordan Peterson ever had a, like, a worthwhile thought in his miserable life. If I wanted to make a lot of money on YouTube, that's what I'd do. I would just grift conservatives. They're the easiest people in the world to make money from. You just say racial slurs at somebody and then the money comes in. That's all you gotta do. I don't do that because I'm at least partially motivated by making the world a cooler and chiller place. And sure, Maybe I'm not entirely altruistic in my motives, but do you know who is? The people that pay me. Not Prager you. they eat children. I'm talking about the people that give me money on Patreon. They don't have to do that. Nobody's making them. They don't really get anything from it. The videos are free no matter what. I mean, there's like a doodle that'll be at the end of the, the video. That's it. And yet, almost one in a hundred of my subscribers chooses to donate at least a dollar to me anyway. Just because they like seeing this garbage and they want me to make more of it. What is crowdfunding, if not just a highly individualized and atomized form of communism operating within capitalism? It's people asking you to give what you're able to other people so that they can have 
what they need. YouTube fashion blogger Harrison Bomison recently uh, played a, played Donkey Kong Country uh, for charity. It's 2019, and he raised. I don't think I'm exaggerating when I say this. All of the money on planet Earth for a charity called Mermaids that was uh, being defunded due to a hateful misinformation campaign conducted by uh, Noodle Dick Swamp people. In the wake of that enormous outpouring of, of generosity, I have seen many other content creators just do live streams and, and make money for charity just because they can. Because that's what happens if you just get out of people's way. They're just spontaneously generous and giving to one another. Even in an economic system where not having money can literally kill you, people are willing to be generous with their money. Now let me just stop here for a second and address the elephant in the room. There are some smuggos in the comment section right now giddily pointing out that all of this is happening within capitalism. And they think that's very clever. So if you if you see them saying that, please tell them that they're very smart and they're very they have very big brains because they need that positive reinforcement at this crucial stage in their development. You're my special guys. You're my special little guys. I love you so much. And yes, that which attempts to uh, ameliorate some of the damage done by capitalism is is naturally going to happen in capitalism. Like you like imagine in a classless, moneyless, stateless society organized around blah blah blah, like, what would a crowdfunding website do? Like, imagine a guy needs brain surgery under communism. He wouldn't go to a crowdfunding website, he would just go to his doctor and explain that, that he doesn't have the money for the surgery. And then his doctor would look at him and go, what, what are you talking about? W money? I don't even know what that is, and I certainly wouldn't require it as something that you'd need for surgery, everybody should be able to get surgery if they need it, otherwise people would die. What are you what are you talking about? Also, I can't operate on you. You're my son. But the guy's dad is a capitalist who would never give surgery away for free. How is this possible? The doctor is the man's mother. This has been another Thought Slime Brain Tickler. I'm not delusional in this particular way. I know that companies like Patreon or Kickstarter or Indiegogo or GoFundMe or Sklamskabash or Hoopty Diddle are not doing this out of the goodness of their heart. They're all capitalist institutions that profit off of the generosity of others to others by merely owning the means by which that generosity is funneled. None of them have altruistic intentions, but their users do. Their users are giving what they can, even in an economic system that applies enormous pressure on them not to do that. So you might think I have this rosy and optimistic view of the tech sector, but I don't. They're goblins. I don't believe that CEOs or thought leaders had anything to do with this. The web just kind of organizes itself communistically because that's more efficient. Cooperation and shared resources is a whole hell of a lot more productive than competition and artificial scarcity. The only reason we think otherwise is because the people who own everything stand to benefit in a competition. So of course they're going to tell us that that's just more productive and it's better for everybody. It's pretty convenient for them, don't you think? This wasn't a grand vision that emerged from Bill Gates or Jeff Bezos' brain, it's just how people organize themselves if you don't force them not to. And boy howdy, do they want to force you not to. When mobile devices like cell phones started becoming the hot new thing, tech companies smelled an opportunity to make everything about the web more profitable and therefore worse. You might notice that unlike personal computers, mobile devices tend to be locked into only allowing licensed software to be used. Here in Canada, it's actually illegal to jailbreak your iOS device. Not simply to pirate software or download an app which does something already illegal. The very act of modifying your own iPhone to run software that, for whatever reason, Apple doesn't want you to run is illegal. That's like if IKEA could make it illegal for you to use their forks with spaghetti that wasn't made by Ikea. If this, I started this analogy without a roadmap of where it would end up. Web traffic from mobile users has gradually become the main source of all web traffic. 
And that means that bit by bit, pun intended, the freedoms that you and I take for granted, the freedoms which allowed us to build the web in the first place, are being sold to the highest bidders. Now software which may have been free in the past suddenly becomes monetizable by big tech companies. Now even developers who want to give something away for free might find themselves unable to pay the fees, or may find themselves unable to live up to licensing standards that big tech companies impose on them. Now tech companies have the power to control exactly what you're allowed to put on your devices and remove it without your consent. Hey, remember earlier when I talked about how everybody kind of works for free on the internet and how cool that was? Well, it also sucks. Tech companies make a lot of money off of the free labor of their users and thousands of open source developers. They incorporate that free labor into their products and then privatize those products and just have that money. If you contribute a million lines of code to uh, an open source software project that Amazon uses to make a billion dollars, you're not gonna see a cent from that. And gradually, our eagerness to work for free has been exploited by tech companies for so many little small things that we don't even notice it anymore. Hey, will you review this game? It'll help our algorithm sort it. Hey, this article is a stump. You can help improve Wikipedia by expanding it. Hey, since you're already logging into this website anyway, do you mind helping us fine tune our image recognition software? We promise we don't use it to help a police state identify dissidents at a protest. Oh wait, whoops. Hey, like and subscribe to my video. How did, how did that one get in there? What I'm getting at here is that while I firmly believe the web was built by people behaving like communists, it still benefits capital like everything else in our economy. The web proves, I think pretty conclusively, that people are willing to work altruistically for the greater good of their community. The fact that people will do that in an economic system that actively exploits and punishes them for doing it speaks to a profound sense of charity at the heart of the human spirit, one that we have been conditioned to ignore. These resources being made free and available to everyone has produced the most profound cultural shift in living memory. It was built on the labor of thousands of unpaid volunteers, and the proceeds are being funneled into the hands of an elite few. There's a name for that particular kind of robbery. Capitalism. You take something that rightfully and naturally belongs to everybody and enclose it so that you have exclusive use over it. Then you can sell it back to the same people that helped you build it in the first place. We are meant to feel grateful to tech companies like Google or Amazon for bringing these innovations to our doorstep, but the truth is, they didn't build this stuff. We did. They own the infrastructure, but they don't own it rightfully, they just own it legally. By rights, it should belong to everyone. It works better when it's in the hands of everyone. Here's the thing I really want to stress though. That's not just true for the web, that's true for everything. That same process of enclosing and privatizing resources that should belong to everybody occurred with everything in our economy. The web is new, and most of us have watched it develop over our lifetime, so when changes are made, we notice. But at some point, the same process played out for everything from food, to housing, to entertainment, to public space, to family life. All of those things gradually became ways for a few people to funnel money away from most people. And if we weren't used to it, we would be outraged by it. And I can prove that. Do you believe in net neutrality? If you know what it is, chances are you probably do. The idea of net neutrality is that ISPs shouldn't be allowed to charge tiered bandwidth speeds for various websites. Every All information on the internet should be treated the same and, and, and doled out in a fair way. Instinctively, when you hear of a goblin like Ajit Pai uh, working for, for vampires to undermine net neutrality, you understand that that's a bad deal for you. But for some reason, we're all just willing to accept that that's how the rest of the economy should operate. Please like and subscribe to me on YouTube for more of this. Uh, I have a Patreon. I I these people gave me money in it. You can do that too. It, it, it would mean a lot to me because I would use it for living. Is Don't have a job right now. Uh, um, th there's other videos you can watch also. 
uh, click around youtube.com, watch my videos or other people's videos. Probably mine would, I would prefer if I'm being honest with you, I would prefer if you watched mine. Please stop sending me news about Garfield. I I don't care about Garfield. If you have news about Garfield Eats, great. News about Garfield, I, I, I don't care. <laughs>